Hello everybody, welcome to this week's video. Today we have something kind of interesting, rather special actually, as you can probably already tell. It is the Toyota 4Runner, uh, 2024 Toyota 4Runner. Specifically, this is going to be the TRD off-road version, which is kind of a mid-level spec, I guess. Um, it, well, geez, look at this thing. Uh, <laughs> I have not been in a 4Runner for a really long time. And I, you almost forget how pretty it is. It's absolutely beautiful. This orange color, which is solar something or other. Oh, I always forget the colors. Um, I, I wasn't sure about it when I first saw it because it is incredibly striking. But my word is it, it has grown on me and it's beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. Um, this is this is the forerunner this is what it looks like it hasn't changed in almost 15 years this design debuted 2010 didn't it and god it just it's aging like a fine wine it is absolutely beautiful what design lasts 14 years effectively unchanged almost none it's extremely rare really i think it's only the japanese that do that they're a patient folk i guess um and when you get something right why mess with it? We're not going to do the typical all the way walkthrough today. I've, I've had a really interesting week. Let's go inside because it is pissing rain. I don't know if you can tell, but it is raining like a son of a gun today. And before I get water on the lens, I just want to head inside where we can have a chat. All right, in we go. Whew. Very miserable day today. Can you hear the rain? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah, it's wet today. All right, let's fire this puppy up. Okay, there we go. Did you hear that? Oh, the, damn, my podcast is going to turn on. The roar of this V6 is so wonderfully old school. There we go, perfect. I got it off. Um, I was, <laughs> like I said, it had been a long time since I'd been in a 4Runner. Honestly, I don't think I've been in one since, a, since the third generation, and that's got to be at least, what, 20 years, roughly speaking? And it hasn't... God, I, I know it's changed, and yet it hasn't. You know, the way that V6 fires up, it's it's like hanging out in the 90s again, that big roar, you know, etc. Uh, the way the HVAC system in here works, it's just so... I hate to use the word old because that's not fair because that implies that it's somehow bad. It's just very, very traditional, very basic. You know, this is a fascinating vehicle. It really is. I've been doing some digging and I'm by no means a forerunner expert. So chime in in the comments, you know, um, as I move forward through this thing, just to sort of, you know, illustrate how truly unique this car is. It's absolutely amazing. Before we get driving, because driving is kind of what this thing's built for, I just want to touch on a couple of things. The interior of this car is, is heavily noted for its... Um, vintage status if you will from the infotainment system um to uh, my favorite part of the interior believe it or not is this clock look at that <laughs> i hope that's coming through on camera because not only do you get this little digital clock from 1995 but you get the two little buttons to change the time look at that oh my god i have not seen those well i haven't seen them since my 2013 toyota sienna this is a toyota thing toyota's philosophy when it comes to some of their cars anyway, is if it ain't broke, don't fix. Uh, that's a, that is effectively a cliche now when it comes to the 4Runner, because as I said, this design debuted 2010 production year. It is currently the 2024 production year, 14 years uninterrupted. And it is literally, as far as I can determine, and if I'm wrong about this, please do post it up because I really would like to engage in some kind of conversation about this. But it's basically unchanged. One or two minor tweaks from what I could tell, but nothing significant. Uh, Toyota, when they loan you this car, they gave a little window hanger thing, which is, I've never seen that before. And it stated the changes for the 2024 model year. And it was a new color and that's it. You know, <laughs> Toyota has this fascinating pathological need not to screw this car up. So they simply decided that they'll leave it alone. Uh, weirdly, there's there's great wisdom in that, isn't there? You know, there are a few creature comforts in here. It's not completely Stone Age. You have heated seats uh, on these little dials down here, which completely threw my family for a loop. Like, Dad, why is it a dial? What happened to buttons? And I'm like, well, dials work, son. What can I say? You can get a heated steering wheel, which is right down there. I'm going to turn it on because I like heated steering wheels. Sorry, I'll turn the fan down because it is quite loud in here. It's amazing. And the HVAC system in here hisses and pops. 
<laughs> Reminds me of uh, the 99 Durango I owned years and years ago. Um, yeah, that was that was a character heavy car and so was this thing. Um, so yeah, you get heated seats, you get, uh, you know, this infotainment system is interesting because when you look at it, you know, sort of on its home screen or the the navigation, which isn't actually that bad, all things considered, um, but you go to the, the home menu, uh, menu, sorry, the home button, etc. You know, it's, it's not great, um, but it actually works fairly well in CarPlay. You plug it in, the screen resolution's okay. Uh, the size for me is fine. It's no big deal. It's not a completely horrible piece of crap. Uh, curiously the worst part of course is going to be those cameras you know that's about as even though it's raining that's about as clear as it gets you do get the 360 camera which is you know fuzzy on a good day however uh, it is useful for parking this thing because it's kind of a bulky car so the 360 thing and then gets in this trim level you get that with the trd pro i believe that's the case yeah um you know, it, it it works for the most part. That that camera quality is a little a little funky. But Honda and Toyota, they don't like the uh, upgrading the cameras that much. Um, otherwise, you get big chunky, but huge buttons. Look at the size of even my chubby fingers. You know, plenty of room. Obviously designed if you're wearing gloves. I don't know who wears gloves when they drive, even if you go off road. I certainly don't. But again, to each his own. Uh, you know, you get a couple of cup holders. It's a car. It's great. I like it. Big, huge, chunky vents up top. Um, if you're in trouble, you know what button to push. See? And it all works. It's so cool. Uh, the dash cluster is just analog, except for this little digital <laughs> uh, digital section here in the middle, which is just adorable. Look at this thing. It is fabulous. Ah, yeah. It, you get to, it tells you the steering angle. It's actually rather useful. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's not much there, right? It's... Uh, yeah, it's just a basic, basic car. Um, and yeah, let's get driving and then I'll sort of run through, you know, my ruminations on this thing. Because this is a really interesting vehicle for so many reasons. Um, there are rumors, and I don't know if it's been confirmed or not. I couldn't really find official confirmation. And uh, I reached out to my deep sources at Toyota. I don't actually have any sources at Toyota, but, but I asked. Uh, the person I email with and they could not confirm or deny that there's a new forerunner coming for the 2025 production year um, If it is coming, we should hear about it pretty quick, but they do like to drop these things on us last minute um, You know the idea that this production run has lasted for 14 years is probably You know indicative of how Let's use the, the windshield wiper shall we? you know, how truly afraid Toyota is of screwing up something that works. You know, I was looking at the sales figures for this car, give or take over the last 14 years, it sells somewhere between 100 and 140,000 units, roughly. Um, and that's a lot, that's a lot for a vehicle like this. A vehicle that is not cutting edge, not up to date, nothing changes. You know, the current culture in general and particularly with cars is new 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 show me something fancy give me bells and whistles you know anything shiny that's what i want um and this car goes flies right in the face of that nothing changes there's nothing fancy nothing shiny nothing new it just is what it is you know i drove the mazda mx5 recently and i the thing that struck me about that car was how committed to its purpose it was you know it's a small uh, roadster sports car and it, it sacrifices all other things to achieve that objective this thing is designed to go bush bashing and as soon as you put your foot down you realize that they built it to that purpose in terms of its power band how it's geared how it drives how it feels you go like this and it is incredibly wallowy it the steering isn't very responsive not like and that is not a criticism, so do not shit all over me. Well, go ahead if you insist. But what I mean is, like, this car is built to... And I do do a bit of off-roading. I'm not an expert by any means. But you like things that are very linear, extremely predictable. And you like a vehicle that's not going to surprise you, you know, when you're on a hairy road or whatever. Um, and that's what this thing does, right? You know, you're... You, you're not going to get yourself into trouble with it. I mean, you can if you insist, but you know, it will compensate for for your mistakes when you're out in the bush. I was actually in the bush 
uh, on some logging roads last week. My brother-in-law and I went out in his Ram 1500, and it was the Ram always does fine. You know, it's 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 an okay off-road vehicle. Certainly has nice four-wheel drive, etc. But we were constantly being passed and uh, encountering forerunners, 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 forerunners. This car has a legendary reputation um, for reliability and for capability. And Toyota clearly wants to hold on to that. You know, they, I mean, this thing, yeah, like it, that's why they don't change anything. Because for the purpose to which this car is built, what it has now is perfectly fine and it works really really well you know you're not gonna i i don't know i mean is a four cylinder because i think that's the future you know at some point when they're forced to change it you know a four cylinder turbo uh you know an eight speed auto or you know please don't use a cvt but you know that type of stuff all the more modern technology is that going to be as reliable you know as the iron and granite that the you know engine and transmission in this thing are made out of I don't know, you know, I mean, Toyota has a good reputation, but you get my point, you know, this thing, this car protects you, you know, I can feel, you can feel that when you drive it, you know, it's not, it's not going to impress you with its speed, you know, I, right after I picked it up from Toyota, I had to go up a hill and pass uh, a slow, you know, a slow driver. And this hill was, I mean, relatively steep, but I mean, I go up that hill all the time. And yeah, the Forerunner, I put the, my foot down. I hadn't really adjusted to how this thing drives yet. And the Forerunner said, mm -mm, no, we don't do that. So I actually had to back off and pull in behind this guy. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you're looking for anything, you know, sporty or whatever, uh, yeah, look elsewhere, right? I mean, this thing is built to, you know, to a very specific purpose. The suspension feels very, very soft. You know, it's not, sloppy it's just soft right and if you aired down the tires and you know clipped along at 60 on a on a rutted logging road it would be far more comfortable than the ram as an example you know the pickup truck that we were hooning around in last weekend and i would really like to get one of these out into the bush i really would um i didn't get permission to do that this time otherwise we'd be in the bush right now but uh, at some point in the future i would just love to see how it performs because i get the impression it would be fabulous and lord knows that is its reputation um yeah i mean the criticisms of this car are far and few between fuel economy is one and yeah she's thirsty no arguing that probably has to do with the gearing um, more than anything else you know i'm not certain that these small turbocharged engines are the fuel efficient wonders that uh that they try and convince us they are you know especially the smaller the engine the bigger the turbo i don't know i yeah i'm just not sold on that idea you know i think this thing is as thirsty as it is because um, of how they've geared it you know because it's almost like it sort of as soon as you let go of the gas it just sort of starts to slow you know it's not designed for um like a traditional road going uh driving experience you know it's designed to be very very controllable uh on loose surfaces and this thing most certainly is um yeah that's that's i mean the toyota 4 i don't know what's coming for it you know now that i've driven this thing of course i've spent all week on the internet you know looking up gen 3s right and i'd love to get the one with the v8 in it just because you know i'm <laughs> i'm an unsophisticated knuckle dragger uh and man are they expensive holy smokes this thing is 50 is 50 starts around fifty six thousand canadian in this trim in this spec which is kind of like i said it's kind of a mid spec it's about 60 and you can spank it all the way up to over 70. um Honestly, I just get the base model. It has all the good stuff in it. You don't need anything else. Um, you know, uh, or go get a used one if you can. Uh, used ones are, are, they really hold their value. Holy smokes. It is astonishing how expensive it is. I've actually been considering buying myself just a something to go four by fouring in because I don't, I used to go out all the time when I drove um, my F-150 all the time. I would just take it out there. I don't have that anymore, um, and I can't always take press cars out. They don't. Uh, they don't always sign off on that, which is fair. So I would, uh, yeah. I was so I was looking at the Forerunner as I ramble, and it was God. It was all of the five figures, and I'm like, not for a toy. So I'll try and find something else. Um, if I get one, maybe I'll do a video on it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you're going to spend the money on this thing, it will hold its value, and it will never go wrong. If you are the type of person who 
wants a forerunner for what it can do and for what it was built to do i'd buy one before they change it just in case you never know uh, you never know what's coming you know it's funny because the forerunner you see them everywhere i've seen them everywhere well where i live anyway sorry maybe the, the audience will provide some context to where they live but where i live they're everywhere you know people love these things uh forerunners and teslas that's how we roll in the greater vancouver area um you know and most of them probably never see the bush you know there's a weird and yet people buy them and drive them daily them all the time there's a charm to this car it's so hard to explain but then you combine that with just how good it is and how long it will last you you know if you're going to buy this thing and keep it for 20 years that's a real possibility you know change the oil every couple you know like just look after it and it will look after you that is an absolute fact it's a very very cool car i don't usually gush i shouldn't say that sometimes i do over a vehicle but man i love this thing i'm gonna miss it when it's gone and if you're gonna order one new please please order it in this orange the silver gray seems to be the the like iconic color for forerunners from what i've seen anyway you know but this orange color speaks to people i'll just give you a quick example I, i've done a couple of long highway trips on this thing i had to go see some customers what have you and on three separate occasions and i'm not shitting you three separate occasions as i'm cruising down the highway i was only doing 100 because it's a forerunner <laughs> but people who passed me hands out the window thumbs up three times i have never experienced that ever you know and that was really cool this car especially in this color speaks to people and yes i am gushing it, it, this has been a very interesting week for me and that's why i'm not doing the typical thing you know rambling on forever about infotainment or whatever uh, this is very cool and if you've ever thought about buying one i would recommend that you go drive it and give it a go see what you think of it because i love it and i was completely taken off guard by that and please do it before they change it not that they'll ruin it but you never know because if you want a forerunner this is the kind of forerunner you want We'll see you guys next time.